What's up, friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. Glossier is coming to Sephora. They're going to be launching in Sephora on January 17th. We learned this news maybe a couple months ago back in 2022, and a lot of you all were asking me, Sophia, do you like Glossier? What should I get from Glossier? What is worth it? And so, my friends, I have delivered. This video is going to be me basically doing mini reviews of all of my Glossier products, of which there are actually many. And I'm also going to be doing a full face so that you guys can see me demoing these products in action. So if you're interested in hearing all of my thoughts on Glossier, then keep watching. And if this happens to be your first time here, then welcome. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Sophia, and this is my channel that focuses on all things beauty and luxury. Every single week, I upload new videos, usually focusing more on kind of luxury, high-end beauty, Sephora brands, and also so luxury fashion and lifestyle. So if that sounds of interest to you, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam. And you can also click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. You know the drill, friends. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like this video. Also, I'll be linking all of these products in that description box down below. Hopefully, we will be seeing all of these products at Sephora. That is my hope. And I also heard that Glossier is going to be launching a new product, a deodorant, on launch day at Sephora. So more good products from Glossier. All right, party people, let's start talking about these Glossier products. I am going to be talking about them just in the order that I apply them to my face. This is how I do my makeup. And the first product that we're going to be discussing is the Glossier Future Do. This retails for $26. This is probably one of the more like confusing products in the lineup. It's kind of confusing what this actually is. It is described as an oil serum hybrid. And you can use this product in a couple of different ways. The first thing is almost like a skincare topper. If you're not going to be wearing makeup, you can put this on over whatever you applied for your skincare. I don't really do that so much. I already have my full skincare routine. I actually like to use this in two different ways. The first one is as a primer. It has a very, I mean, dewy. It has a very dewy texture. That's the best way to describe it. And this is great if you're going to be going in with maybe a more matte foundation or even just something like the product you're going to see in a second that is a little bit harder to spread, maybe like a solid concealer or a solid foundation like the Wayne Goss foundation, for example, or maybe the KVD Good Apple Bomb foundation. If you want a little bit more juice and glow to your skin and you want your foundation to really glide over your face, this is basically like a glowy primer, kind of similar to the Natasha Denona High Gen one that came out last Last year. But friends, that's actually not my favorite way to wear this product. I actually like to use this product as a very natural, glowy, dewy highlighter. I like to apply it on top of my makeup. Yes, on top of my makeup, even over powder products, even over powder bronzer, etc for just that kind of juicy, almost sweaty kind of glow. I saw Katie Jane Hughes do this so many times. She's kind of the one that got me onto this product. I used to use this product nonstop. I still use it, but it used to be like my favorite super duper natural glowy highlighting product that I would kind of put on top of all of my makeup. I think if you're careful, it won't disturb the makeup you have underneath, but do keep in mind, this does have a lot of oils in it. So you don't want to use that much. I just take a little brush, kind of dab it on the top of my cheekbones. And you can see right here, it just gives you the most beautiful, natural, lit from within glow. It only comes in one type. There's no colors of these. There's really not a ton of pigment to this. It's more about the finish that it gives your skin. So you can kind of use it as skincare. You can use it as a primer, but my favorite way to use this is as a dewy, juicy highlighter. And I will say this is one of my favorite products from Glossier. I think it's probably one of the more unique products. So I'll just kind of say that right off the bat, friends. If you're trying to figure out where to spend your money, this one is one of my faves. Next, we have the bomb.com. This retails for $12. This is Glossier's lip balm. They have a lot of really good flavors. I have the Swiss Miss one, which unfortunately, I don't think this is available at the moment because it was a limited edition holiday one. But man, they have a lot of really good, delicious flavors. Personally, I like the coconut one. That's kind of my second favorite after this one. And some of the highlighted ingredients of this lip balm are castor oil, beeswax, and lanolin. So there is lanolin in here for anybody who has a lanolin allergy, I do want to call that out. I actually use this every single night before I go to bed or even in the morning after I'm done my skincare. I like to pop on a little bit of lip balm, especially if I know I'm going to be applying lipstick later in the day. 
it is a really good solid lip balm. Do you need this? Is this revolutionary? No. I think that this is a good buy if you if you really like the scent, if you really like the flavor, if you find one that you can kind of connect with. Some of them are colored, they're tinted, like this one is a brown color, but it doesn't really add much color to your lips. So I just want to call that out, friends. Can you use, you know, your CeraVe healing ointment instead? You can. Can you use Vaseline? You can. But I do think this is a good lip balm. I think it's very very nourishing. I love the Swiss Miss flavor, but do I think it's absolutely groundbreaking? Like you need to get every single flavor? No, I think it's kind of up to you if you need a nude lip balm. I think that this is a good one. Next, we have the Stretch Concealer. This retails for $20. And this is, it is a solid concealer. It's potted, it comes in one of these little glass containers. The thing I wanna call out here, friends, is that this is a very glowy and emollient type of concealer. This is not something that dries down. That being said, I do like this. I think it is very multi-purpose, but you have to be somebody that likes that emolliency. I'll show you guys in the B-roll. I apply this all over my face. The fact that I applied the Future Dude to my face before, really makes this just glide on effortlessly. I'm using a little fluffy brush and I'm just applying this to the places where I need it the most. I was actually kind of surprised. I haven't tried this technique in a while and this concealer really does cover up the majority of my rosacea and my hyperpigmentation, but it still kind of lets your skin shine through. That being said, if you're expecting this to dry down, it really does not. You really have to kind of put powder on top if that's what you're going for. So if you want that super dewy effect, this is great. You can use it as a foundation as well. I'll also show you guys how I use this underneath my eyes. This is super hydrating. If you want something that is not going to kind of emphasize any dryness under your eyes, I think that this is great. Keep in mind though, because it is so emollient, I do see this settling into fine lines. So I think you have to ask yourself, do you want something like this that you then maybe need to powder? Like, is it worth going in with something super emollient only to powder it? This is not really the kind of product that I like to use specifically as an under eye concealer. Actually, my favorite way to use this, and I use it every single day is to kind of shape up and snatch my brows. I'll show you guys what I mean. I dip into this little pot with a very flat, thin brush, and then I just kind of gently go around my brows and sort of snatch them into place, if that makes any sense. And the reason why I really like this product is not only because it's in a pot, but because it's so sort of emollient, it kind of gets everything to stick into place while also providing a little bit of coverage so that the brow just looks super duper perfect. By the way, I wear the shade G11 if we are shade twins, but G12 works for me as well. It's just a little bit more on like the pinky side. So yeah, I think that this is actually a really good concealer, but I think it is for very specific uses and for a very specific dewy look. I did layer powder bronzer on top today and I think it looks great. I actually like the look that I created today, but if it was in the summer, you know, I live in Boston, it gets very humid. I don't think that I would do this look, but for the winter, my skin feels very hydrated and not too glowy because I put a little bit of powder bronzer on top. Next up, we have my favorite product, which are the cloud paints. These retail for $20 a piece. I have every single shade. I love these blushes. These are still some of my favorite cream blushes. I feel like these came out before cream blush became a trend. And I still think that these are some of the best on the market. The two shades that I'm demoing for you guys today are my two, I love them all, but these are my two favorites. First, I have the shade Storm, which you guys are going to see me applying to my cheeks. And I also have the shade Dusk, which I'm going to apply to my eyes in just a second. The reason that I like these is because they are so user friendly. If you're somebody that you don't typically like cream blush, and especially if you're someone that you don't like cream blush because you don't like the fact that some of them don't set down and they stay kind of tacky on your face, then these are great because these, they're very kind of moussey and airy, right? They're called the cloud paint. So they blend across the cheek so, so seamlessly. You only need a little bit 
and then they kind of set down. They're not sticky, they're not tacky. I love the way that Storm looks on the cheeks. And then you also can wear them as eyeshadow. So I'm showing you guys how I use Dusk and I just took a fluffy little synthetic brush. I pop that all over the eye. You can definitely use these as kind of one and done types of products. You can sort of use them all over your face. And friends, the other thing that I like about these is that they're very easy to mix. So if you wanna create your own shade, you definitely can. I'm showing you guys right here what it looks like when I mix together my two favorite shades. The great thing about the shade Dusk is that even though it is boring, you can pair Dusk with any of the other shades that are in the Glossier Cloud Paint line, and it instantly kind of just neutralizes the color a bit. So if I want to use Storm, but I feel like it's a little bit too bright for the look that I'm going with, I can always mix in Dusk. And in this example, friends, when I mix these together, I just use that shade to sort of pop into the crease to add a little bit more dimension to my eye look. I get this very nice, soft, sort of minimalist, monochromatic kind of look. I love it. I do think that at $20, these are a little bit expensive, but I think you need to take into consideration that these last a very long time. You really only need a little bit. So even though it's just one tube, it's gonna last you months. Even if you use these every single day, it's gonna last you a pretty long time. Next up, we have a cream stick highlighter. This is the Glossier Halo Scope, and this retails for $22. It's called the Halo Scope because Hopefully you guys can see this in the camera, but it sort of is shaped like a halo. The inner core is sort of a vitamin enriched balm, essentially. And then the outer core has crystal extracts to kind of give it the glow, the sparkle, the finish per se. So I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like on my cheek. I think this is a solid balm highlighter. You guys saw my recent declutter. I got rid of a lot of my balm highlighters because I just don't use them all that much because a lot of them, they look the same. I am gonna be keeping one from Glossier. The one that I'm using in the video today is called Quartz. But for $22, I think you need to ask yourself, do you already have a balm highlighter? Personally, if I'm choosing between this and the Future Do, I prefer the Future Do. I kind of like that look a little bit better. You guys can see I have quartz here on this cheek, and then I have the Future Do on this cheek. If you want a little bit more pigment, go for the Halo Scope. If you want more of like that dew, you're more about the texture and the gleam to your skin, then go for the Future Do. But I don't think that you need the Halo Scope if you have other dewy balm highlighter sticks, if that makes sense. I certainly don't need a million of them. Next up, we have the Boy Brow. This retails for $17. I feel like this was one of Glossier's standout products. It was such a hit. I bet a lot of you still use this product. I don't use a lot of brow pomades, but I will say I think that this one is my favorite. I like the fact that the formula is very fluffy. It gives you kind of like those fluffy brows, and I don't really go for a very trendy brow. You guys will see like I like kind of very perfect looking snatched, but also semi-natural kinds of brows. I don't do the fluff up. I, I just can't do that. I like my brows to be pretty defined. I like the texture that I get from this. I usually use the shade brown. I think the one that I'm using in this video is the shade blonde. So it's a little bit lighter than I'm usually going for. But I think this is good if you're somebody that you like a very natural look. You want a little bit of hold, not a ton of hold. And you want to add a little bit of like thickness and fluffiness to your brows. Maybe your brows are a little bit sparse. This is really going to fluff them up and it's going to add a little bit of hold. Personally, for me, I like a little bit more dimension to my brows. So a lot of times I will use this in conjunction with other products like the one I'm going to be talking about in a second, or like a pencil or an additional brow gel to add a little bit of hold. But in terms of brow pomades, this is one of my favorites. So while I like the boy brow, I love the brow flick. This retails for $18 and this is their eyebrow pen. Was this the first one to really become popular? I don't remember. I've tried a lot of eyebrow pens, but this one is my favorite. I like to use the shade brown. I can sometimes use the shade black, but that one is a little bit dark for me. So buyer beware. I think that this is just great because there's something about the brush that makes it so precise and easy to use. It's not a marker, it's a very small, thin brush. And the way that I like to use this is I like to go in with this last and I just carefully go around my brows and just sort of fill in the areas that are sparse. If you ever look at my brows and you think, 
wow, they look super defined. It's usually because I used this product. I just go in and I kind of fill in the little bits, usually around the perimeter of the brow. And I feel like this makes such a big difference. I feel so much more put together when I use this product. You can use this if you have very sparse brows to kind of draw in a brow hair by hair. I don't really need to do that. My brows are thick enough. I also don't have the patience to do that, but you definitely can. And then the last thing that I really love about this product is that it seems like it lasts forever. Whenever I think that I'm getting towards the end and it's drying up, it just keeps going. But if you've had one of the pens for a little bit, my recommendation is to just store it in like a little cup, maybe with your eyeliners or something, store it upside down. And that's gonna sort of draw the pigment into the tip. And trust me, it will last for a lot longer. I actually have like three of these in my jar because I thought I thought I was running out, but then the first one I had just keeps kind of going. I'm just waiting for it to dry up, but it just keeps going. Next up for $18, we have the Glossier Lash Slick. This is their mascara, and I actually really like this. I like this for what it is, which is an extremely natural mascara. This is kind of like a tubing formula, basically. If you're new here, I really like tubing mascaras. I like something that gives me a lot of length, and that's kind of what I get from this. You're not going to get a lot of volume from this, okay? It does have sort of little tiny fibers within the formula that add a little bit of length and kind of definition to your lashes. You definitely can build it up. My recommendation, if you want a little bit more from this mascara, mascara is to put on one coat, then let it dry for a second, maybe while you do the other eye, then go back in with another coat and just kind of repeat that until you get the desired length and volume that you want. This is also an excellent bottom lash mascara. I think that the longevity of this is pretty good. It, I think it's actually very good. So this is kind of my favorite super natural lash mascara. This is more natural than like the Victoria Becca mascara. It's more natural than the Merit mascara. So just letting you guys know that from the bat, it's a very natural mascara, but I do enjoy it. And one of the ways that I really like to wear this is actually when I'm wearing false lashes. So if I go in with like bigger false lashes, because you don't add so much pigment, I like to use this to kind of blend my real lashes into the fake lashes without getting too much gunk and mascara on those fake lashes because we all know it. Most of the time we like to reuse the fake lashes if we can, if there's not too much glue, if there's not too much, you know, other mascara on them the next time we want to reuse them. So that's also what I really like to use this mascara for. Next up, we have the Generation G lipsticks. These retail for $18. Glossier does have more than one lipstick formula. I think they now have kind of a more glossy, like satiny type of formula, but this is the original Generation G lipstick. And these are perfect if you want kind of that almost blotted effect to your lips. You want something that kind of feels like a chapstick almost, maybe not quite as glossy, a little bit more matte and sort of natural looking on the lips. And you want it to be as simple as applying a lip balm to your lips. You really don't need a mirror with these. I'm showing you guys here my favorite shade, which is the color Jam. This is kind of my go-to if I want that, like I've just been eating blackberries in the forest kind of look. It's perfect for fall. It's really good for winter. I think that these are solid lipsticks. These remind me a lot of the Merit Signature Lightweight lipsticks. In general, I think I like those a little bit more because I kind of just like that color selection a little more and I think the packaging is better. But I think for $18, these are pretty good. It just kind of depends on the shade, to be honest. These are not the most long wearing lipsticks, but they're very comfortable on the lips. And once again, if you want kind of that very easy, effortless, minimalist, on the go kind of lip with a little bit of like that blotted effect, then I think you're going to like these. And the last product that I'm demoing for you today is the Glossier Lip Gloss. Can't be Glossier without a gloss. This retails for $15 and it's a gloss. <laughs> it's a gloss, guys. I think that this is a little bit overpriced for $15. I think you can get something just as good from the drugstore. It kind of reminds me of like the MAC lip gloss. It is a solid gloss. It really is. It is a good lip gloss, but this probably, it's, it's really not the product from Glossier that I recommend the most, especially because I think a lot of my subscribers out there, you guys, you have lip glosses. We don't need another lip gloss. So this is probably one of the products in general that I would skip.
skip. All right, friends, those are all the products that I'm going to be reviewing for you all today. These products are still in my collection pretty much because I like them because they are good products, but I don't think that they are for everyone. So that's kind of why I wanted to go through each one, let you know who I think it's for, who may like it, who might not like it. If you are wondering what my favorite product is and where I think you should start, if you haven't tried Glossier before, it's definitely the Cloud Paints. This is my favorite product. And then second to these, maybe maybe the future do or the lash slick but again keep in mind what is your makeup preference i have never tried any of like the skincare from glossier i already kind of have my skincare i don't really need to be trying any more of that but comment down below friends you know sound off in those comments down below let me know have you tried any of the products that i talked about today what are your thoughts and then also what are some of your other glossier faves that maybe we all should know about since glossier is going to be coming to sephora if you like this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up I would very much appreciate that as I mentioned before I'm going to be linking all of these products in the description box down below so if you would like to support my channel shopping through my affiliate links is a really great way to do so subscribe if you haven't already and with that friends I hope you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one goodbye <music>